What's going on guys, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I want to showcase the styling kit volume 2. Alright guys, so this is the second styling kit that I've released so far. Uh, it contains 10 Photoshop actions and 10 gradients. Uh, you can use them as gradient maps, but also as like regular gradients. It all depends on what you want to do with them. Uh, today I want to show you how to install them and what each thing does and maybe like some side notes on how to use them and stuff. So before we go into the action pack, I'll show you how to install this. Alright, so when you download this package, you'll get this. Uh, it contains some previews of each effect, an ADN file, a GRD file and a text document. So in this file you can see what each effect does and how to install it in a text explanation but I thought it might be easier to do this in the video. Alright so if you haven't done this ever before Photoshop actions are basically things you can do in one click. So let me just show you what I mean by that. This is just one click. And you get a abstract background out of like nowhere. Uh, so the reason I mainly use Photoshop Actions is to speed up my workflow or to kickstart a project if I don't have any inspiration or I need to do something quickly. Uh, it's best to start using one of these and then modify them later on or replace them later on. Anyways, how to install them. So first you need to go to the Actions panel in Photoshop. So you want to go to Window, Actions. Mine's already over here. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to delete mine. So if you want to import new actions, you go to here, this hamburger menu, and you click on load actions. And if you go to the package where you downloaded this from, you'll find the .atn file. And if you load that in, your action package will appear in this window. This package also comes with 10 gradients, and I'm going to show you how to install those as well. So you want to go to window, gradients, as you can see here they are. Uh, but yeah, what you want to do is you want to go to this button here, and you're going to click on import gradients. And the .grd file that comes with the package uh, will load us up. So if you click load, you'll be able to see all of these different gradients. All right, so now for what each action does. So for the first one, I'm gonna create a black background and we're gonna write some text. And the font that I'm gonna use is called Norma. It's available on dreadlabs.net as well. And I'm just gonna type something out. All right, so the first one is the toxic glow. And let me just show you what it does. If you click run, this will create a toxic glow or a nuclear looking glow around your text. So this especially goes well with like bright colors, very vibrant colors as you can see. Uh, but this also works on like existing graphics. And I'll show you a little bit later in the video when you can combine these actions and what it will look like. All right, so for the next one, I've loaded in this image from Unsplash. It's by Phil Korn. And this is the well-known at this point gradient map, uh, just in simply one click. So if we run it, you can see that this has this like gradient map effect that everyone's been using on Instagram. Uh, this is also where the gradients come in, so if you go here and you can see in the layer menu that there is a gradient map adjustment layer. If you click on the gradient here, and if you go to the Dreadlabs G maps, you can just play around with these. See which one works best for you. I especially like this one on this particular image. But yeah, feel free to experiment with it and see what's your favorite and, I don't know, maybe change them around a little bit. So yeah, that's the gradient map. All right, so for the next one, let's just make a nice little gradient here on the, for a background. And let's drag in an ellipse. So this next one will create a glossy Y2K effect. So if you run it, bam, there's your glossy Y2K effect. And this is what I wanted to show you with the toxic glow. This will also work on objects that have multiple colors or like anything really. So if we just click this, You'll see that the Toxic Glow also works really well with the Y2K Glossy effect. Alright, for the next one, uh, this will be a pixelized text effect and I'm going to show you how to make it and also uh, how to edit it later on. Just before you start this, make sure that you have a black text. That's very important. Alright, so the font that I'm using is called Now Nash and it's available on Dreadlabs very soon. So we'll select the pixelized text effect and we'll run this. And as you can see, this is now completely pixelized and you can just move this around and recolor it or do whatever with what you like. Uh, if you are not satisfied with how big the pixels are, you can easily go to your layer menu, double click the thumbnail here. And you'll see that there's something called DPT group. If you open it, you'll see three objects. You don't have to worry about any of these except for the mosaic smart filter here. So if we double click this, you can see the cell size. So the bigger you make this, the bigger the pixels will be, as you can see. Same goes if we do lower it down. The smaller it will be, the less uh, pixely it will be. Now just save it up and close it back up. And now you're back into your normal project file. All right, so the next ones are two texture generators. Uh, these basically do the same thing, but they have different blend modes. So let me just run this. And as you can see, this applies to the darker parts of your image. 
and it will give this like paper-like texture. Uh, now if we make this invisible and we'll go to the darker one, as you can see this only applies to the lighter parts of your image. So if we zoom in here you can see that the lighter parts are affected without the darker parts. Um, so an easy thing for you to do is if you want to go duplicate this, we'll remove the darker parts by just going like this and we'll make this into a smart object. So just to make everything invisible, we now have only like this layer where it's only like the blue colors. And if we click the lighter texture onto the color here and the darker texture, just leave it in there. Now we have both uh, parts of our image texturized with about the same texture, but they have different blend modes. Um, so yeah, this is nothing too special, but it's a really easy way to generate a texture without having to search through textures in your uh, folder. And like I said in the beginning of the video, you can also replace it later. All right, so for this next effect, you also need your text to be dark or black. Uh, preferably black, but it's called the Grunge Text Generator. And basically what this does is make an automatic ingredient on your image without having to play with displacement maps. So let's just run it. And as you can see, we now have this stressed edge. So if you want this to be heavier uh, and do it quickly, instead of like going back into this and manipulating all of the uh, settings here, you can just easily do that if you want to. Uh, but what I prefer to do is, but what I prefer to do is just make your text a little bit smaller, click on play again. Now the text is a little bit more drastic and it's starting to bleed together as you can see. And now you can just scale it back up however you want it. So this next effect is inspired by like some anime. And it goes really well with one of these pictures that have multiple like pastel colors in it, like this one. So this is a picture by Massimilano Morosinotto. I hope I pronounced that name correctly, but you can find it on Unsplash. Uh, so yeah, the YTK Photo Glow, let's run it. And as you can see, you get this anime-like glowy like feeling about it uh, so you can make some like fantasy looking like backgrounds it also looks a little cartoonish uh, so yeah it's a really easy way to to play around with some photo manipulation without having to do anything but just one click all right so the last two are basically abstract background generators what i use these for is basically uh, generating a background if i have like a typeface to test out or just an artwork that i am not satisfied with 100 percent or if i have like a 3d render that needs a background I just mainly use these ones uh, because they're just super easy to use and manipulate into. Uh, but yeah, let's just run this. As you can see, this is like a liquid pattern with some glow and a halftone pattern over it. Uh, and let's just run the second one. Uh, this is more like a swirly rotating, also like anime inspired uh, graphic. Both of these are like a little bit inspired by Yu-Gi-Oh, I guess. Um, but yeah, these really work well for me uh, when I'm like trying to kickstart a project, start out of nowhere, instead of like having to experiment with all of these blend modes, colors and stuff like that. It, this just makes it way easier for me. Anyways guys, I hope you find this useful. If you want to get the package, there's a link in the description. So before we end the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. If you don't know, if you become a patron of mine, you'll get access to all of the project files from my tutorials, as well as a 15% discount in the Dreadlabs web store where I sell a lot of these assets, including this package. And you'll also get a Discord rule. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to the full episodes of the Starting a Clothing Brand series, where I, as you guessed it, am starting a clothing brand. This also comes with a lot of project files as well as with the opportunity to ask feedback for your own personal brand. So if you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description. And with all of that being said, this is Trump from Dreadlabs tuning out and I'll see you guys in the next video.